Hello, hello, hello. How we doing, guys? It's good to see ya. What's going on? Where are you at? Where's my people? Let's go. Hey, Kason, how are you? Oh, that's cool, Karina. I'm glad you found Dima. She's amazing. Hey, hey, Seb. Good to see you. 6 a.m. here. You stayed up all night. Oh, my goodness. Bless your heart, Michael. That is so sweet. I have heard. How do you have any tips? Okay, Stim in. I have a hard time telling what octave you are now in, I'm assuming you're saying. Okay, so um, that's a good place to start. I'm going to, what do you mean turn on my camera? The camera's on. Yeah, I can see me. Can you not see? Can you guys see me? Can you see me? Okay, I was going to say, what the heck. Um, yeah, so I actually have some people in my course right now who had a question about this. So I'll answer because I think this is a good way to start um, with some questions. Hey, guys, good to see you. Hey, Toronto. Hey, Magnus again. Hey, um, okay, so here's, here's something that's good for you guys to have. Um, download this app, this piano app right there, and I'm going to show you why. And if you have a piano at home, even better. But um, you will see you will see this the scale here and you'll see also the staff right there so when i play say for instance this c it highlights where that oh i'm just playing an e it highlights where um that c is on the staff okay so if you're looking to know okay well am i singing in a certain octave if you if you cross reference that with say um a piano app like this or actually being on the piano it will help you a lot to know like, okay, this is where I am on the staff and this is, I'm singing the same note as this E or I'm singing the same note as this C. You'll be able to um, then look at the staff and say, okay, I'm in the right, right spot if you're reading sheet music or okay, I am matching this singer's pitch if I'm learning a song or doing a cover. And I know this because I'm matching it to the piano and I'm looking at where I am on the staff. I hope that helps. Do bass singers go up to tenors? I've taught some bass singers who go up to tenor for sure, um, but that doesn't mean that all do. So it depends on the disposition of the vocalist. Um, uh, Magnus, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for the chat. Um, let's see. Thoughts on Jesse J. Jesse J's awesome, Serbia. Nicola, hi. Hi, she's so good. I mean, I've reacted to her a couple of times. Um, she's super amazing. Um, the app is just called Piano App. It's a free app. Um, but most of the things I recommend as far as apps are concerned, I think everything that I recommended so far is free. But here's what it looks like one more time. Uh, right there is the piano app. And when you open it up, it looks like this. You hit, uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. You hit practice right here and it'll take you to the keyboard, okay? Um, hey, France. Hi, how are you? Como t'appelles-tu? I speak a little bit of French and a little bit of Spanish, um, but don't ask me to. <laughs> How's the weather where I am? It's it's not so bad. I live in Florida, so it's pretty great, actually, compared to the rest of the country right now. Uh, 12,000 feet of snow here in Western Ontario. Sorry about that, that stinks. Um, Beyonce reactions, we will be doing more of, I promise. You're the only vocal coach that actually gives good comments. Oh, thank you so much, that's so sweet. Um, let's see, let's see, what else, what else? Hi from a non-singer, tried for years. Oh, Mark, continue trying. Try my eight-week course. It's for all levels, but it considers the beginner. Um, and even the verse module even teaches you how to stand properly when singing. It does not assume that you know anything. So it's called Sing Smarter Not Harder. It's in any of the description boxes of my videos. Check it out. You may be a singer and not know it. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, I, ooh, Tara, that's helpful as usual. Okay, good. Hi, Thailand. Nice to see you. When you say, okay, Jelino, when I sing, my voice gets raspy and painful. How can I resolve this? Jelino, I would ask you um, in what register your voice gets raspy. Um, if you can answer that real quick, I can try to further help you. But um, if it's painful and raspy, that's a classic sign of strain. Um, but raspiness can also be a vocal characteristic, but pain is not. So some people have natural rasp. I do um, in certain places in my voice. 
And actually the voice changes as you get older. Um, so as you go through life, uh, it can, it can change and the characteristics of your voice can morph and that's okay. You know, own that change, but rasp plus pain, that's a sign of strain to me. Um, so I would definitely get with a coach and, um, work on your technique because technique alleviates strain. It's just simply by singing better and more uh, properly. Magnus high falsetto, super head voice, reverse phonation, inhaled whistle. There is so much conflicting information and claims. Okay. That's good. Um, so what, what you're saying, Magnus, you're saying all of these things are conflicting. High falsetto, super head voice, reverse phonation, inhaled whistle. Now the last one, I'm not quite sure what you mean, but I will say that whistle, super head voice, and high falsetto are just synonyms for one another. Um, and a lot of people just use layman's terms for something that, you know, vocal pedagogy, you know, pedagogically speaking in the vocal terminology would be, would be classified as something different, but that doesn't mean that the, the, the end result isn't the same. If I'm singing super high and whistle tone, someone could say, wow, your, your high falsetto was so great. And I would say, thank you, because I don't need to correct them and say, mm, that's actually a whistle tone because it's above this certain note and this is the character. And why? You know what I mean? Like we're not in a voice lesson. So um, for, for our purposes, since we kind of are today, um, I would say that when you are in a super head voice, it's probably easier for your brain to kind of, um, reconcile where it is by saying whistle because the characteristics of whistle are are more closely related to the sound that's coming out it actually gives you something more concrete to hold on to rather than saying high falsetto or super head voice which is this ambiguous term in our head that we don't really have a sound to put next to but whistle we do. We know. We do. We know the sound of a whistle. And so when we think whistle in our head and we're singing, we're thinking, OK, voice, do whistle tone. It's a lot easier to have some point of reference in which to execute on. I hope that answered your question. Oh, thanks, Spiker. I appreciate that. How do you find your own voice and not imitate singers you hear whenever singing? Jake, that's a good question. OK, so. This is this has a lot less to do with singing and has a lot more to do with your per personhood and who you are. Um, so what I mean by that is if you are a person who is very um, secure in themselves, you have a very strong sense of self, you have a lot of confidence, you love and know who you are, then when you attempt to sing, your personhood and that individuality is going to come out more naturally and way easier than it would if you simply did not try to um, did not try to act like someone or if you did try rather to act like someone else when singing and thinking like my voice isn't good enough so I need to sound like them that thought in and of itself is going to keep you from finding your sound because what's going to happen every time you do a cover is you're going to be like my voice isn't the standard I need to reach the standard I'm not that they are and so therefore I need to be like them when in fact the best covers and the most successful covers are when the artist, the singer, listens to the point of reference and executes it within their personhood. So they take what they love about singing and they take the song that they're covering and they can join and marry those two things together. But the mistake that most singers make, and I would say probably 95% of them, is if they listen to a cover, that inner thought life of, I'm not as good as they are, so I need to try to emulate them comes out. And there, there you have it. Then you have this uh, half-baked version of greatness that someone else already did. And you don't want to imitate anyone. There doesn't need to be another Christina Aguilera. There already is one. And she's very good at what she does being Christina. There doesn't need to be another Dimash. He, he took that place already. But there isn't another Emmanuel. There isn't another Nathan. There isn't another Joel, right? So be yourself. And whatever that is, own that. And make that the best thing. I hope that answered your question. Um, Emmanuel Martinez, e you are great. Oh, thank you so much. Wait, I lost it. Uh, if you could react to Deanna Rova's vision of love. Okay, awesome. I will definitely keep that in mind. But also, I want you guys to keep in mind, um, the Q&As are really more for me helping you with your vocal questions, asking me. If you're in the course, feel free to ask me live questions here. Um, and if you're, um, if some, some of you are actually vocal students at the studio, feel free to ask questions here about voice. Uh, any requests for reactions, please save those requests and type them into any of the comments in any of the videos because that's where we get um, that's where we get the suggestions from. 
Okay, let's see. Um, Gustavo, do you know any male-based singers? Um, oh, I'm, I lost you. Sorry, Gustavo. So many people. Dan Slay, do you have coaches in Dallas? Um, not, not Dan, not um, live coaches in Dallas, but my coaches and, and I also coach all over the world via Skype, FaceTime, and Zoom. And I like Zoom the most because it's free and, well, they're all free, but Zoom records um, the session on its software and it downloads it to your, um, your machine so that you have it. And that's a really, really nice feature. So um, if you are a student or want to be a student, you don't have to worry about your time zone. We'll work that out. You don't have to worry about where you are in the country. Um, just call, I'm going to give you guys the number to the studio. If you're local to the country, you can call 404-437-7919. You're going to get a nice lady named Tammy and she will help you uh, get placed with a coach. A lot of students, opt to assess first with me. They'll do a single session, whether it's an hour or a half hour with me. And then based off of what I hear and what your goals are, I'll then say, Hey, you're perfect for Jeremy or Charmaine or Heather, who, whichever coach I think you're great for. Um, and then, um, and then we'll place you with them on a weekly basis for regular lessons. Um, but you don't have to be in Atlanta or Florida or anywhere to take lessons at TSS. We have students in Bulgaria, Thailand, Japan, uh, a lot in Australia for whatever reason, all over the nation and the U.S., of course, South America, et cetera. So um, don't worry about where you are. If you want great training and you want it to be at TSS, we can help you there. Um, let's see. <laughs> male based singers. OK, Gustavo, I'm trying to find you. Male based singers you could recommend. That's what I'm asking you when you lost me. OK, mm, you know what? Male based singers that I could recommend. Huh. I will have to get back with you on that. That's a good question. And, and actually, Gustavo, um, ask me what um, what genre too, because I will I will um, get back with you on that. I want to give that some thought because uh, that's a good question. How to tell whether um, tightrope? How to tell whether a vocal coach is genuine when they say you are good or you have potential? Also, I love your reactions and how you analyze. What's the best way for you to give an analysis of me? Tightrope. That's an excellent question. Lots of good questions in there, and thank you so much for the compliment. Um, okay, we've talked about this before. There is no gold standard, unfortunately, when it comes to um, kind of vetting a vocal coach. Um, and I will say this. Vocal coaches who only do vocal coaching, which a lot of them only do, um, it's kind of hard to get a, a more honest answer, I would say, just by human nature out of them, because they're literally by saying, hey, you probably shouldn't be a singer. They're literally talking you out of their business, right? And it is a business at the end of the day. Um, what I love about my studio is that we're full service performing arts. And we didn't mean to be. It was originally just um, voice and acting and piano. But because we offer so many things, everything except for actually group dance, it's the one thing we don't do because space. Um, but even still, we do choreography and live show uh, coaching and all that kind of stuff. But the reason that uh, I like the fact that we do full service is because if you came to me and or one of my coaches and they know this, they, they're trained by me and I say this to them, too. If you came to me and you said, hey, I just want an assessment to know if I can sing like if it's even worth it for me. And I want you to be honest. We are a hundred percent honest with you about that because a lot of times singers, well, people that want to be singers that come to us to get assessed, they have this love for performing and they have this kind of like energy about them, but the singing or, or the, the, the gifting and even if it's even in its most uh, smallest sense may not be there. And a lot of times we'll say, you know, you're going to have to work really, really hard to make your career out of singing. However, I see potential in you when it comes to acting or, you know what, you're super musical and you did mention that you play the piano. I think that you should move into that more seriously than taking voice. And so we can be a hundred percent honest with you and we're still not working ourselves out of business. So that you know, as the client, Hey, I know that singing probably isn't my thing. They may rec be recommending this to me. I may not want to do that, but I got an honest answer out of them. Um, and it's a selfless answer because we are we are not working ourselves out of business in recommending you something else. But we're also being honest with you about the fact that it may not be the best career path for you. Um, but a lot of vocal coaches who only vocal coach, they're going to be like, yeah, sure, we can work on X, Y, and Z. And you have potential because they want you as a student. And you can't really blame them for that because, I mean, 
that's their job, right? But if you want brutal honesty, you want to go with someone or a company that's very well established, that's that you're not going to make or break their business, and that they have other options and opportunities, revenue streams for business aside from what you're going to them for. It would be my that would be my uh, suggestion. Um, what's the best way for you to give an analysis to me? Okay, so that's also a great question too. If anybody wants an analysis, um, I am still working on the infrastructure. I'm sorry. Oh, thanks, Tyro. I'm sorry. It's taking so long. I have no point of reference. I'm creating this from scratch, like out of thin air. But what we are going to be doing is um, uh, Insta analysis where it, from YouTube, from the description box, you will be able to click on a link and you will be able to go to a page, assign your, um, ask for an, um, ask for an assessment and say, I want to do either a half hour or an hour assessment or 15 minute assessment, whatever it is, we will listen to one of your songs, whether it be original or cover song, and then we will assess it. We'll give you our honest opinion of like tightrope ass whether you should even be singing. And if you should be singing, what we can do to help you, tips and tricks on how you can work on it on your own. And if you're giving us an original song, we will even analyze the original song as well. You can sing it acapella, you can sing a cover song, you can accompany yourself with whatever instrument you play, totally up to you. Um, if you don't wanna wait for that Insta assessment infrastructure to be set up and you're like, I gotta do this now, I want it now, that's fine. You just need to email info at terrasimonstudios.com or call Tammy at 404-437-7919 and um, me or one of my coaches will be happy to assess you now. Um, but it should, I mean, without emailing or calling that, that one click kind of deal will be coming on in the description box. Let's see what else. Do I have songwriting coaches, Amanda? Yes, I do. And they're really good. Uh, one of my coaches, Nikki, um, recently uh, is, is writing. It's really interesting. She's writing She's taking like songs that are that are popular on the radio and she's rewriting the lyrics to make them educational for kids. And she's releasing those on YouTube um, and they're really great. They're actually super catchy. I'm learning just listening to them stuff that I've forgotten since like fifth grade. <laughs> so maybe I can be are you on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader if it's still around and when because she's doing really great things um, with with writing. And, you know, she, of course, writes adult things, too, but she has a passion for children's music and she does a great job there. I'm a songwriting coach um, and my. And I have two other coaches that actually do songwriting as well, for sure. Um, so if you're interested, again, call or email that 404-437-7919 or info at terrasimonstudios.com. Um, who gave you the idea of doing reactions on YouTube? Red Blue, that's a funny question. Um, so at first, by the way, the whole YouTube thing was a total accident. I did not mean to do that. I was intentionally doing um, Insta stories with my videographer and we finished early one day and he was like, Hey, you want to uh, do a quick, like vocal coaches take on someone singing really well. And I was like, okay. And I mean, I do that. I analyze and assess people all day long in in vocal lessons. So I did, and it kind of became a thing. It wasn't on purpose. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Devon. I appreciate that. I'm a young guy who can hit uh, someone. I'm a young guy who can hit a G5 in head voice and a G4 in chest. G sharp five in head voice and G4 in chest. Is that good? That's really good. That's really, really good. Um, I would love to hear that. How would you end this sentence? You can sing if you can. Ooh, Emma, that's a good one. Okay. And and I would invite you guys to chime in too. What are your thoughts about that? If fill in the blank. You can sing if you can what? What's your idea of someone who is being able to sing, what what makes them able to sing? I would say there's a few things. You can sing if you can sing on pitch. You can sing if you sing with vibrato. You can sing if you have vocal flexibility. You can sing if you have, um, even, I will say this, you can sing even if you have a limited range. You can sing even if you've never been on a stage before. You can sing even if, you don't have vibrato because you may have still good pitch and that is a characteristic of still being able to sing. Um, lots of lots of answers to that question for sure. Let's see, you can sing if you commit. Alex, I like that one. You can sing if you can talk. Mm, Jovan, that's not 100% true because three to 5% of the world's population is actually clinically tone deaf. It's a very small percentage and in my 20 plus years of coaching, I've never come across someone who is actually clinically tone deaf, um, but actually, Speaking of, another fun little app to give you guys if you want to see if you are clinically tone deaf or not is this tone deaf test right here. And again, it's free. So you just 
download it. It looks like that. And it gives you this, um, this test. And so you say, take the test right there and it'll give you steps to go through, put you through your paces and it'll give you a score at the end of the test, um, saying if you are, or if you are not and, and what percentage of pitch you can hear. It's kind of cool and fun. Um, Oh, let's see. What else? What else, guys? Um, why is it so difficult to hit high notes when singing a cappella, but much easier when singing along to the radio? Okay, Amber, that's actually a really good comment. So have you guys done this? Have you been like jamming out to the radio and you know, you're like your own rock star in the car and you think you sound so good, right? And then say you go to a voice lesson or forget the voice lesson. Maybe you're just even singing like, like she said, acapella and you're just, Oh, you can sing. Yep. Yep. Anita, that's right. Um, and then you're just singing and you're like, this sounds like booty. Like what just happened? Well, chances are when you're listening to the radio, you're hearing more of the singer than you are hearing of yourself. And so it's a false sense of, well, proficiency and also, and kind of more importantly, the, the music is up high because you're in your car and it's a very enclosed area, right? And so you feel kind of wrapped up and enveloped in the sound that's being produced too, which hides a multitude of sins. It also causes your voice to push more because you're feeling like you're not heard as well. And that's true because the music is loud most likely and the car is small, um, which is why our, our coaching studios are pretty generous in size because we want our, our students and our singers to feel like they can make some noise and there's some ambient space for the sound to bounce off of. Um, but yeah, you got to be careful about singing in the car and singing to the radio, especially because again, you're singing with someone who's already been tuned, mixed and mastered and EQ'd and all of that stuff. All that gingerbread's been put on their voice and there's little old you in the car who has none of that. And then, so, so you're comparing and if you're not comparing, you're also falsely probably hearing their goodness and assuming that it's yours, which it may not be. And you're also hearing the music on the radio and it's covering up a lot and it's keeping you from being acutely aware of, Hey, am I supporting? Is my mouth open? Right. Do I have the proper technique? You may be straining and not even knowing it until after when it's too late. Uh, let's see. Want to hop in and say you're fabulous. Oh, thanks, Stephanie. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Let's see. What else? What else? What else? Okay. Da -da 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 -da. I don't think I'm tone deaf, but my F5s and F4s sound the same in chest. I'm a 16 year old boy. Hmm. They're not the same. If you're singing different pitches between F5 and F4, that's a difference. So you should check out the piano and compare your voice to that. Um, how do you accommodate for lag and internet during lessons? Ooh, that's a good question, Terrell, um, especially when you're using piano and trying to sing along with a student. Okay, so I don't, well, we, what, when you say I don't, I mean the piano thing. So in live lessons, the coach sings and plays and the student is there and we put them through the paces. But I have also recorded, um, and if those of you who are on the course, you've experienced this yourselves, um, even in the course, I have this, and um, that's part of the perk of the course because it's the same treatment as, as live lessons or private lessons. Um, I have pre-recorded um, exercises just like I do in live lessons. They're the same exact ones, but I've recorded them on Dropbox. And so when a student of mine or someone that's in the eight-week course goes to take um, – exercises they're already there and so there's no latency because the sound is being played all from their end and i am the the recipient of the sound or the coach is a recipient of the sound so if they're in the course and they are um, wanting an assessment they play those exercises and sing them on their end and i'm listening if they're in a private lesson and it's a digital lesson and let's say they're singing a song, it's the same exact treatment as an exercise. They play the song on their end, they hear it in real time, and they sing it in real time. And if I want to give a demonstration, I am sent the song, I play it on my end and sing to the music or sing to the exercise, and I give my demonstration. Um, it's it's doable with Zoom to not have to do that. They've gotten really good at the latency thing, but there's still just a slight little delay, and I don't like that, so that's how we get around that, and it works fabulously. It's 36 here. I'm cold. I'm so sorry, Steph. That is freezing and I'm not freezing. That's horrible. Would it be possible to type um, the apps in text somewhere? Are you using iPhone? Can't seem to find the tone deaf. I don't know if it's on Android because I don't have an Android, Android, but I will type in tone deaf test. That's, that's what it is. Tone deaf test. And the, the piano app is simply the word piano. Um, so I type that in for you. Um, Okay. Um, 
wait, I just lost you. Ah, it's moving so fast. Okay. Um, Big M, I'm a 21 year old bass baritone beatboxer. I was wondering if you have any tips on how to extend my range lower. I struggle to hit E2s. Well, that's pretty low. And I really want to get that note clean. Okay. Um, something that I like to do when stretching low range is, well, there's two things mainly, uh, there's a lot of things, but two things mainly. One is the thought life, right? So when we go really low, uh, the tendency is to do that, right? It's to depress the chin down into the tongue to frown and kind of give way and, and give up on the, the brightness and the forwardness of that tone. So instead you have to think high, light, bright when you're going down, you want that opposition. We kind of went over this last, last live Q and a too for a different reason, I think. And, um, and so when you go down like that, you want to go, ah, instead of, ah, where it gets wolfy and husky and back, you want the sound, even though it's going to be darker, you want to force it forward as long as you possibly can. And I like sirens. So what I just did, the ah, is really nice. Um, you can also do um, some, um, there's an exercise I do that's mama, 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 mum, and you just go down from five, four, three, two, one. So mama, mama, mum, and move down, mama, mama, mum, and as you go lower and lower, mama, mama, mum, instead of mama, mama, mum. You hear the tonality is totally different between the two as well. So not only does it sound better, but you're going to get more notes out of going lower that way than you would the natural, you know, the, the way the body's tendency is to, to do that. Let's see what else. Uh, how long does it take to train your voice and hear what note you or someone else is singing? Hear what note? Well, I hopefully, unless you're tone deaf, you can hear the note you're singing right now. Ooh, Dan Kling, how to increase vocal agility. That's a good question. Um, so there are quite a few exercises I have for that, um, but I'm not going to do them here because it's really easy to do them wrong. So vocal agility is something like... Um, it's kind of like conditioning. It's like when you're conditioning your body and you're training it to um, be more cut or be more lean. Vocal agility is kind of like when a deer runs and it's got this, pew, 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 it can go um, a bunch of different ways. Um, I will say staccato exercises are really good for this. High moving fast exercises are good for this. Um, and I have some that I've created that really help with that. So if you want to um, if you want to check that out, I would definitely recommend a couple of private lessons or get into the course, the eight week course, because that also deals with vocal agility. Um, I think in week five or six. Um, okay. Um, how do you know the difference between head voice and falsetto? Okay. That's a misnomer, Jad. Um, head voice is falsetto. I mean, for all intents and purposes, you've got you've got the meat and potatoes of registers. You've got your chest voice, you've got your mix, you've got your head voice or falsetto. And then you've got sometimes an upper extension to that, which is whistle. Um, a lot of people, uh, especially in the male singing realm, especially when you're talking about classical music, they'll say falsetto and they'll make it seem like there's this, there's this unspoken, you know, um, register that you should know that you don't. And that's, that's not true. Falsetto is head voice. Um, Let's see, um, at least when I talk about it. How to improve your runs. Katya, that's the same answer I'm gonna give you. Um, that's not something I can answer right here in the Q&A, but I can in a private lesson or an assessment of you or in the eight week course. Um, those are like way longer uh, explanations that I don't wanna take up a, a bunch of time to answer. Um, Tara, I continue to sell, excel in my singing. Why you? <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. Thanks, Steph. That's awesome. Um, meh, I answered your question. Also, people don't understand what support means. So, Enrique, yeah, um, it's a thing about squeezing as hard as you can to support. Well, support is about coordination, not about strength. Um, Enrique, I would disagree with you a little bit there. Um, I don't know if you're a vocal coach on, on the chat or whatever. Welcome. Um, but uh, support is about coordination, but it is also about strength. Um, a lot of the times when my students have difficulty supporting, um, it's because at the lack of strength they have in their abdominal chamber, and that has to be built up. I literally assign crunches to some of my students because they literally lack the strength it takes to squeeze the abdomen properly in order to force that air out. Um, so I would say that it is uh, a combination, not one or the other. Um, let's see. 
Who's the world's best vocalist? Sebastian, that's a loaded question. I can't answer that. Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, you're a very beautiful one. Oh, Mary, who you're a French dude like me? <laughs> tu parles français? Juju, Anna, I need, I need to speak fluent French. <laughs> let's see. Um, let's see. How to get consistent vocal range. Any tips on getting better in each register? Exercise, exercise, exercise. So guys, let's talk about what that means. Like, what does practice mean? Okay, because so many of my students are like, oh, I practiced. And I'm like, okay, so show me how you practice. Um, when I when I say to them, I want five days a week, a half the value of the lesson. So if you're taking hour lessons from me, I want half hour practice. If it's, um, if it's a half hour lesson, I want 15 minutes a day. I don't mean like, oh, I skipped a day, so I'm going to do an hour today. This is this is very much like like going to the gym. You're going to do your body zero good other than getting really, really sore for the next three days if you work out for three hours in one day and then not again the rest of the week. So it's time and pressure and it's consistency. So when you are practicing certain things that you want your voice to improve upon, you have got to keep small pieces of time in consistent ranges, Okay. So when you go, say, um, when you go from, uh, like I'm doing an hour in the car and it's not quality practice to, I'm going to do 15 minutes in front of the mirror and I'm standing up and I'm very aware. And all I'm thinking about right now is my practice that 15 minutes will get you way farther with what you're looking to change and improve upon in your voice than that hour of distracted practice time. So just give up the whole car karaoke thing. I would recommend it, it, when I'm, when my students say they practice in the car, I'm like, doesn't count. It doesn't count because I know eventually you're going to sit back in your chair. You're not going to be taking a proper breath. Your abdomen, your, your lung capacity is going to be decreased. It's not, it's not proper practice is you're not doing yourself any favors. So make sure that the, it's the quality over the quantity. I would rather someone practice five to 15 minutes a day, but be very intentional about what they're doing and very aware of the sound they're producing and the facial expressions that they're making and the bodily functions that are going on. than just, Oh, I sang the song a few times. And so why am I not getting any better? Well, because you're doing the exact same thing over and over, expecting a different result. By the way, that's the definition of insanity, in case you haven't noticed. Um, when singers do these crazy ad libs, are they mostly rehearsed or do they just randomly come up with those notes? Ooh, Andromeda, that's a good question. Okay, so um, let me address that. It's both. I will say this. Some of my, my most nutty riffs come straight off the cuff um, when I'm performing live. It doesn't mean that I haven't done riffs performing that I haven't also rehearsed. Okay. So I would say that most singers, if you're really, if you're a seasoned performer and if the stage doesn't make you nervous, if you're just kind of like, Hey, I'm, I'm just here and I'm not super nervous. This is part of like my home away from home. Then you rely really on your vocal chops to say, all right, I'm going to do what feels good today based on how I'm feeling on this note. I know that I'm probably going to do a, B or C in this section right here. But if you are newer to performing and if it makes you uh, more nervous to kind of go off the cuff, then there is no shame in the game of rehearsing your improvisational sections so that they're nice and clean. Because the more confidence you build up in the success of your performance, the less you may need to do that later on. But just because I don't necessarily rehearse my runs or my riffs now doesn't mean I didn't work really hard on it when I was say in middle school or high school and get more comfortable with it. So it's, it depends on where you are in your vocal journey, really. Um, what is twang? Ooh, someone stops. So yeah, I will definitely answer that question. So twang is used um, very much in a uh, country music setting in that genre. And it is, can I make my vocals stable? Gargi, I'll try to answer that next. Um, twang is when you you play to the diphthongs. And so I'm going to assume since you're asking that you don't know what a diphthong is. A diphthong is the more narrow part of a vowel. Um, and there's usually multiple parts to a vowel, but it's it's when you play to the more narrow part. So I'll give you an example. Um, what's a good example that's really obvious? Um, someone did it the other day. Twang is also, by the way, it's not just about the vowel. It's about playing to the hardness of consonants too. Uh, for whatever reason, that's coming up in my mind first. So I'll give that example. So when you say um, um, the word for, for example, if I'm singing and I'm saying the word for, instead of saying um, 
I live for you, which is kind of a normal R. They would say, I live for you, for you. And I'm really, really making a thing out of that R, right? Um, a, a good example of twang, let's see. Um, when you say the word state, and I'm singing the word state, and if I, if I sing, um, I don't know, United States, and I want to sing it more twangy, I would sing United States. So I'm playing to that E within the state. And if I go really slowly, state, you hear E, E, T, right? But when you play to a twang or a diphthong, I'm really minimizing the A and I'm moving to the more narrow E to really make that more nasal and state. And it's not really that pretty, but um, it's, it suits, it serves its purpose because it very much makes the genre specific. Um, that when you hear that, you know, oh, that's country music all day long, right? So I've trained some country singers and we actually have to train to the diphthongs and it's kind of counterintuitive to a lot of the other training that I do. Um, but that's what gets you there. That's what gets you to the genre that you're looking to, to sing if you want to sing country. Um, I'm a new singer and I'm quite unsure on how to start a practice routine. Ooh, what exercises do you recommend for a beginner? Okay, Corey, that's a great question. Um, practice routine, we kind of just went over a little bit um, in regard to what exercises I love as far as like training wheel exercises that you can't hurt yourself on I love sirens I love lip trills and in the simplest form a lip trill can be when you do from one two three four five four three two one just simply that and that's super super easy um, I like those a lot um, hang on one second guys hello you can let her in Thanks. Awkward. Sorry. The gate at my house. Um, yeah. So you can do, um, or you could do, um, kind of like an arpeggiation of lip trills. Um, but those are, those are really, really great. Um, but consistency, quality over quantity, little bits of time every day, not just once in a while when you feel like it. Okay. I'm going to take a couple more questions, guys. Um, what else? A couple more. Uh, Guy, do you like musicals? I la, 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 love musicals. They're amazing and super, super fun. I've been in a couple, just a few. And a lot of my students do Broadway and, um, and I am a musical geek. So yes, I do. Okay, let me do one more question. Uh, let's see if we can find a good one. How can I reduce jaw tension? Okay, B-Man, um, let me help you there. Jaw tension, it can be derived from a couple things. It may be from you grinding at night. It may be from TMJ, which is temporomandibular jaw dysfunction, where it's like a disalignment of the jaw when it opens and closes. Um, so the hardest part would be to... Um, yeah, another thespian, yeah. The hardest... Hi, West Palm. Hi, Cubanito Lindo. Uh, an, another, uh, an, it's the, the hard thing is defining, um, what your issue is, the reason for the jaw tension. But I would say that jaw tension when singing comes a lot from insecurity. So when you're doing like an open mouth vowel, make sure to try to drop all the way instead of just halfway. Cause that's when the jaw has to feel like, Oh, I need to, I need to be locked in. And since I'm not dropped all the way, I'm not locking here. So I'm going to force I'm going to force that lock by these muscles firing and you don't want that. So the more you drop your jaw and lock it in place from the actual bone, the less your muscle tension will come into play. Um, oh, Gargi, how can I make my vocals stable? Okay. So if you find, and I'm not sure this is your problem because it's kind of a vague question, but when you want, when you're saying, okay, my vocals aren't stable, if there's a bobble to your voice, it's a placement issue, most likely. It could, it could be coming from a lack of support from the abdominal cavity. It could be coming from not enough space in the mouth. There's a lot of different reasons why vocals may feel um, unstable. And it can also uh, feel, uh, be that way because you're re trying to reach a part in your range that's not really quite, um, uh, developed, it's you're stretching too far. So that's something that I would really need to hear hear you to say, okay, this is the exact reason. Let me let me just um let me just fix that. Um, okay. 
Okay, guys, so listen, it was a pleasure being with you today. Thank you so much for all of the awesome questions. I'm super proud of you. I hope that when we are, um, I hope that when we're practicing at home that you're listening uh, back to this and thinking about what you can do uh, to continue to improve and remember quality over quantity. And if you need some help assessments, um, then I'm happy to be here for you. Just email the info at terrasimonstudios.com or call 404-437-7919. Don't forget to check out the eight-week course if you have haven't already it is so awesome there's hundreds of people in it now and they're doing so well there's some people that are now finishing up the course and they're like when are you doing another one so I will be developing another one soon um, but this one I'm super proud of and I'm seeing such great results out of it so thanks so much guys for watching and I will see you next week we're gonna be doing these every week by the way so um, I'm gonna pre-schedule the the next one Thursdays usually at 12 p.m. is when we're gonna be when we're gonna be doing live questions okay I will see you soon. Bye.